All right, let's continue our discussions on integrals. We just finished talking about the second fundamental theorem, which are those problems that are a little bit difficult to understand but are very easy to do. Just substitute in that top number when you take the derivative of an integral. Those two processes um, are inverses of each other, and so that's all you have to do to solve one of those problems. We're going to continue that by talking about what's called an area function or a cumulative area function. So let's just consider a graph, f of t, and a function defined as the integral from a to x of f of t. So visually speaking, we're going to start accumulating area from a, and we're going to stop at some value x. And this t, one thing that can make this a little confusing is that t is just um, a dummy variable. It can be any letter. It's just so we don't confuse that variable with the x, where, which is the top limit of integration. Um, so an area function is basically the input is where do I stop integrating, and the output is how much area I've accumulated from A to that point. All right. If I happen to be moving to the left on this case, if I went here to my x, then I would get a negative value because I was moving right to left. If this function happened to be below the axis and I'm moving left to right, I would also get a negative value. This is just an integral, but the top limit of integration is the input of the function. So all functions have an input and an output. The input is where we stop integrating. The output is how much area we've accumulated. Now, we have really done a lot of this already. We have looked at graphs of f prime, and we have answered questions about f while looking at f prime, right? Because if f prime is positive, our function is increasing. So we answered questions like, where do the relative maxes of f happen? A relative max of f happens when the derivative changes from positive to negative. A relative min happens when it changes from negative to positive. A, an inflection point of f happens at a min or a max of f prime. So that's where concavity changes. When the concavity of f changes is when the slope of f prime changes. Now, we've done all that, and you could look back if you need to review that. I just want to make this connection. If we're looking at f prime, and I'm asking you about f, wouldn't you agree that f is the integral of f prime? It's just one level less differentiated. Right? If, you, if you're moved from f to f prime to f double prime, I am here and I'm asking you about this. Well, if I am looking at f, and I'm asking you about the integral of f, that's really the exact same thing. The integral of f is like one more step undifferentiated. So I'm at one level, and I'm asking you about the level above that. Um, so really, this is the same content that we did while looking at f prime, because looking at f prime and talking about f is the exact same thing as looking at f and talking about f prime. So why is this any different whatsoever? Well, now we are capable of integrating things. So now I can specifically say, well, the area from here to here is 3, and that value might come into play into the questions. The area from here to here is 4, for example. So I can be more specific, and I can present this as, here's a function, tell me about the area function, and that's how it's slightly different, but really a lot of this stuff is the same. So let's look at some examples. All right, so here's a function, and I'm going to define A as a cumulative area function. A is defined as how much area I have accumulated from 0 to x. So A of 2 is how much area I have accumulated from 0 to 2 under the function. And again, don't worry about t and x being different variables. It all means the same thing. It still means area under this graph. The integral from 0 to 2 is just how much area I have accumulated, and it's this 2 by 2 box, so a of 2 equals 4. Okay, a of 2 is not the height of a function that I'm looking at. a of 2 is the area accumulated between 0 and 2. a of 3 is the area accumulated from 0 to 3. So that's going to be all of this area. So I already had 4. Now I've got another box 5, 6, and a half, 
Now, when I ask you about A prime, this brings into question the second fundamental theorem. If I have A and I ask you for A prime, remember that the derivative of the integral, that's all the second fundamental theorem is about. Take the X that's on top and plug it into the function. I don't have a specific equation for the function. I have a generic F of T. So all I need to do is plug X in for T and get F of X. So A prime of 2 is just f of 2. And f of 2 is 2, right? This is the height of this graph at x equals 2, f of 2 equals 2. So a prime of 1, take a minute, pause if you need to, tell me what a prime of 1 is, and then resume for the answer. Right? a prime of 1 is the same as f of 1 because of the second fundamental theorem. What's f of 1? f of 1 is not the area accumulated from 0 to 1. That would be a of 1. a prime of 1 is f of 1, which is the height of this function at 1, which is 2 also. At 1 and 2, I have the same height of 2. a prime of 3 would be 3. a prime of 4 would be 4. Okay, when you take the derivative, you cancel out that integration process, and you're no longer looking at the area accumulated. You're looking at the height of the function. All right, so here's another similar one. We've got area, the, the area function a of x defined as the uh, integral from 0 to x of this function. And there's a couple questions. Number one is one that, um, because of that slide two slides ago, you should be able to answer. Where do the relative mins and maxes happen? So when this graph is below the axis, I am accumulating negative area, right? I am, all this time, my integral value is decreasing because I'm below the axis. So I am decreasing, decreasing, decreasing until I get up to R. So if you decrease until R and then you start increasing, you've created a min at R. And that is an example of the exact same question if you're looking at f prime and talking about f. Here I'm looking at f and talking about the integral of f, exactly the same question. Where does my max happen? Well, from r to s, I increase for a small amount of time before I start decreasing again after s. So I went decrease, 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 decrease. I increased for just a moment, and then I'm going to start decreasing again, but my min happened at r, my max happens at s. So this is a possible sketch of the um, a function. So true or false, a is less than zero for all x's in the interval shown. Now outside of this interval, uh, this line may go way above the axis or way below, but for the values I'm looking at, is a ever positive, true or false? This statement is saying that it's always negative. So Think for a second, pause again if you need to. Is this a true or false statement? What's going on with the value of A? All right, so think about A. A is the, A starts out at zero, and it starts losing value. So it's negative, negative, negative. It's dropping, dropping, dropping. So it's negative, still negative. And then I start to gain. But the question is, have I gained enough to get back up to positive? And the only way that is true is if this area were the same size or bigger than this area, which is obviously not true. So whatever losses I have made, I have not gained them back enough to get up to positive by the time I get to S. So long story short, true. This is always negative because the losses um, I'm taking here a is decreasing here and increasing here, but that increase is not nearly enough to overcome that big decrease that I had from 0 to R.